Hello and welcome to this video. So now we have an automatically updating uh, web app, I'd like to add a new API endpoint. That's actually to get the live prices. So to start with that, we're going to go into the oanda api.py file and right at the top here, we're going to import date time as DT. And then down at the bottom, we're going to make another class method. So underneath this class method, uh, def candles to data frame, just under here, I haven't got much room. You should have uh, more space than I do. We're going to type at class method and then def pricing API class pair count equals 50 and granularity equals M5. And what we want to do inside here is fairly simple. We just want to get the current prices for the given granularity, the number of candles specified by count and then the pair and then return these. So we'll say that we have an API, which will be a new OANDA API instance. And then we want to use the fetch candles. So we'll say code candles df is equal to API dot fetch candles with the pair, the count and the granularity. And now we can say that if the candles df is not none, now here what we need is the time in a string format. And when we loaded our candles data frame using the function above actually, the candles to data frame, it gets converted with parse into a date time format. Now it originally comes back from the Oanda API in a string format. The problem is that string format's terrible, as you'll remember with at least six decimal places after the second, if I'm not mistaken. So even though we've already converted these strings into times, we're gonna convert them now back into strings. So we're going to type candles df time is equal to and then list comprehension dt dot date time string from time and then x and then we'll take the month and the day and the hour and the minute for x in candles data frame dot time and then the last thing we need to do here is then return candles data frame to dict orient equals records now in the case that the candles data frame was uh, none we'll just return an empty list now this is not the best solution. You might want some error messaging or something like that inside your API here, but for, for brevity, we'll, we'll do it like this. So this is a function that we've got set up then to get our prices for us in a format that we can then return as JSON in our API. What we need to do now inside app.py is add in a new endpoint to actually do this. So we'll begin by typing at and then app.root. Now this is slightly different to the KPI data one. So we're still going to have a forward slash and price underscore data, but we actually need to supply a parameter to this one, which is the actual pair itself in question that we want the data for. So we put in angle brackets, the pair like so, then we'll define get price data. And inside here, then we send the same name as a parameter into the function. And then we have our pair that we submitted in the URL here. So when we do price data forward slash euro US dollar, for example, that'll be the argument into this function here. So what we need to be able to do is call the new function that we've written on the Oanda API here. To do that, that means we need to import Oanda API. So at the top, we're going to say import, oh, sorry. So at the top, we're going to say from uh, Oanda API, import Oanda API. And then down here, we can use this function. So we'll say then that our data is uh, Oanda API dot and I can't remember what I called the function so pricing API so dot pricing API and we need to send in then the pair now you'll notice on the function that we have count as a parameter and granularity they both have default 15 m5 I've just done that in case you might want in your own development to maybe add the granularity and uh, the number of candles you want or something like that onto here for our use case we're just going to leave it purely as the pair the last thing we need to do is turn that into JSON and right at the top of the file, we were importing uh, JSONify, I think that already came with so the starter package. So we'll just say return and then JSONify and our data. And that should be all we need to do to have our new endpoint. So down the terminal, I'm just going to rerun Flask to make sure everything's reloaded. And then back in the browser, at the moment at the top, I've got this KPI data. I'm going to change that for price underscore data. And then let's just do the Euro US dollar. And you can see then that we get the latest prices back for the US dollar. And it looks like it is indeed five minute candles. Here's the raw data as it looks. So it'll be the last 50 candles, hopefully inside here, maybe 49 without the most active one. So that's our back end working then for the live prices. For example, we could do uh, the Euro Swiss franc and there we've got the prices and you can see that it's pretty quick as well I and mean, it takes probably 0 0.2 0 0.3 of a second to get them back so it should be pretty quick on the uh, the web interface as well so we've got the first part done the back end and in the next video we can start uh, loading these prices into the actual web app itself so thanks very much for watching and see you in the next one